Hey, Anne, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. We've spoken many times over the years about how do we develop students' effective skills or their attitude towards taking on a challenge. And you care deeply about helping your students develop that risk-taking, say, no, I'm, I'm going to pursue the challenge and I'm going to do it with joy. Uh, how do you do that? What are some of the structures you put in place? I think a big thing for me and the longer I've been teaching is actually making sure that students have a safe space. And what's come out this year especially is sort of allowing groups to be smaller. If they come down to a group of three or four students that they actually trust, um, they'll all start to get involved in a problem or they might bring a problem to the room and be willing to share it with their peers. This idea of breaking into smaller groups to build that trust, anything else that you're trying? Actually making sure they get on the same page and that's actually been really useful. If you come into any room I've ever had at FAS, um, stuff, um, mass laughs that the minute I change rooms, I immediately ask for more whiteboards. They're great spaces for students to work in. I've shifted it more over to something like Jamboard. And so when you're in the Zoom environment, you're setting up individual Jamboards for the students prior to the class. And then those groups go in and have yeah. the same problems, different problems? Um, mostly the same problems, or they might have a bunch that they can pick from to go off on the thing. So I'll set that one for a group. Or if I've got a smaller jam board, I'll sort of set that one, but give them pages to work on. The, the other thing that you do is this work dump. Do you want to explain that to people? Um, the work dump has just been a place where they can actually put their, put their work in. I can just check that they are actually getting their work done. We've also split it into more of a portfolio. They're looking at what they're doing and going, no, I'm ready for something harder they can, we call it blue. So if you think about um, ski slopes, you've got your green ski slope, your blue ski slope and your black. So yes. we tend to use green and blue. So those are our code words for blue being something that's more of an extension and you've got that option to try at all points. Good. Uh, the work dump itself, it's a Jamboard, it's a Google yeah. site, Google Doc. It's a jam board simply because it allows us all to um, um, work on it so that we can write on it and they can also easily put fit photos into it. Great. This common nature to say, I'm going to take on the more challenging stuff and I'm going to do it knowing I'm going to fail and I'm going to learn from that failure. How are you coming back to this again and again in your math classes to help the students develop in this way? I think one, providing those challenging problems and also making sure that everybody knows that the world isn't going to end if we don't get something right. And it's very much about building trust within the classroom. So if students know that they're not going to have anybody make fun of them and that if they get stuck in the problem that another student is going to come in and help them, they're going to be more willing to give things a try. And do you um, articulate norms with them that you put on a wall? Is that through discussions that you have? Is it? We have one basic norm, which is respect. And one of our biggest things is to respect your own learning and the learning of others. So to respect yourself, you have to push yourself. My last question. In the DLP, we're having to adapt, we're having to have iterative thinking about the way that we do things. What are you gonna carry back into in-person learning? What's coming with you from the DLP back into your classroom? Um, small group teaching. Um, and my grade 11s have come back from DLP and said, can we keep the systems we were using in DLP? So I'm not teaching to a group of 16 at the moment, I'm only teaching to a group of four, five, possibly eight. And they're writing on the boards with me. They're writing on the jam board with me. Less of the stage on the stage than I've ever been. Mm. Because they, the smaller the group gets, the 
the more they speak.